long day. I'm tired, you're probably tired. If you've been helping me with the feedback, even more so. <sighs> On my way home, and before I get there, I just want to take you to the top of this little hill in my backyard and say thank you once again. By the way, feedback is now closed as of today for the first version of beta. But from the feedback I've received, it seems like once I get into the storytelling mode and we're outside of the introductory stuff, that's where I seem to do better, as I was expecting. Not that I did shabby on the previous, but the previous introductory needs a lot of massaging work, and a lot of massaging work has been had. So I will just say that Beta 2 is going to be a lot shorter, hopefully, but only reviewing the second version of the introduction stuff that I shared with you and you've already given me feedback on. And if you haven't given feedback on it yet, don't worry about this one. There is still a version three that'll be coming out, but I'll give more details when I get home. Get to find out if I get to the bottom of this hill correctly. Stupid, stupid, stupid stunts. I'll let jackass, but hopefully mine is the jackass. Or at least the crash. Hey, I'm not an old man that got to the bottom of the hill. All right, I already gave you enough fluff at the beginning, so I'm gonna try to be a little less fluffy for the remainder. It's gonna read your comments, you know who wrote them, so you'll know when I read yours. I'm gonna skip my commentary until the very end again. And if you don't know because you didn't do any feedback, you'll just have to be intrigued by someone else's comments. First one, I decided to focus more on the content than the arrangement. In this chapter, you seem to settle more into the writing and the content is good. I still will advise that less is more and get to the points, I get the points across using small chunks. Agreed, been doing that a lot more. Uh, I like at the end, you ask the reader to become childlike. This tells me where you are headed next. Did anything confuse you? Uh, maybe the stages slash seasons explanation. Yeah, after a reread, I get it. Don't want you to have to reread and a lot has changed there. Did any section scenes bore you? <laughs> Again, the stages slash seasons part, maybe simplify. Agreed and done. Um, did I repeat any words, phrases too frequently? No. Next one, about the target audiences, you say weed out too, yes and no. Is this book for anyone or only coders? We've talked about this to some degree. CTA, call to action was not clear. I've had mixed reviews on that, but I know where people are at with this and a lot of work has yet to be done to that, but understood. Ebook plus upcoming interactive album, yes. Seasons Roadmap, yes, but simplify this. Give me some meat. Feed me, Seymour. Yes, a lot of that has been repeated. Uh, yes, yeah, Seasons Confusing, agreed. Next, was it hard to read the launch chapter without these headings? Yes. You said yes. If so, do you have any creative editorial ideas or workarounds? Use them and write in small chunks. Again, and yeah, a lot of that has been done and that's helped a lot. Writing is like speaking, you say. Tell me what you are going to tell me. I've heard this one before. Tell me what you want to tell me, and then tell me what you told me. You're not the first to say that. Oh, I wasn't trying to make it sound like you weren't unique. Thank you. <laughs> I just mean I've heard that not only before this feedback session, but another one of you told me the same exact thing. So apparently, uh, yeah, safety in numbers. I should pay attention. Outline, substance, review. Thank you. Yes. What do you think of this approach? And you say, yes, go for it. This is great, great narrative, I like it. This is in re relationship or in reference to the, the last chapter that I gave you guys for the feedback. Glad to hear that because the narrative is where things get interesting and a little bit more fluid. The intro needs a lot of work as you've heard me say before, but good to hear that the narrative portion is hitting, hitting home in a good way because I've heard also a few of you say that too. I would give a teaser at the end, something like, <laughs> You wouldn't believe what happened next. <laughs> Would they now? We'll see. Uh, next comment. This nailed it. As a first chapter, it does a good job outlining what to expect from the book and identifying key themes. You did it in an interesting way that really lets your personality show. Thank you. I wasn't confused or bored. I did have one comment I didn't follow. You may want to look at, but I'm tired. <laughs> and reading after a long day of working, reading and critiquing and analyzing and thinking. So perhaps I missed it. I think you have the right amount of repetition. Some points need to be repeated. One marketing philosophy goes something like, tell me about what you're going to tell me. Tell me, then tell me what you told me, and then tell me about it. Uh, mixed up, that stuff, but yes, same thing I was referring to earlier in a previous comment. So repetition is quite valuable. Awesome. Well, it speaks to me is the next comment. As a 45-year-old technology attorney, 
It could be because I coded for several years before that, but I think it's because it has broader appeal than to only high schoolers, which, yeah, needs to be. So again, the high schoolers idea is going to be probably out the door, at least not pigeonholed so much in that direction, because that was more of an accident. I think that you've got a good audience with coders or students who may want to be coders. Nothing wrong with that, but you may be unintentionally closing out others who would benefit from this content. That's, yeah, I'm there. The inquisitive who, why basis for engaging others may be sound advice for people in various ages and stages and even less creative or technical bents. So no epiphanies or million dollar ideas at the moment, but you may want to subtly expand the who of your target audience. Working on that. Next comment. This is a bit of a roller coaster for me. And this is in reference to the formats and overview. Part of it's confusing. I think I noted that earlier. There are a lot of good concepts in there. I do wonder, since you have other versions with interactive features, multimedia in mind, whether some of this will make more sense in that more sensory immersed version. Yes. And that should really be cool. That's all I got. I'm whooped mentally, as am I. Emotionally, as am I. Physically, as am I. Long week for everybody. Thank you. Not because of your ebook. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. I'm just tired and I need to get some rest. Hope I can check out the last few sections tomorrow before Story Origin locks me out. And, and, and as we noticed, it did lock you out, but it was considerate enough to save your data before locking you out. Thank you, Story Origin. Not a lot of technology options are that nice. All right, next comment. The season's roadmap was a little confusing. Man, so many of these comments on that same, and, and I've been, like you've been hearing me all throughout, I've been feeling the same way from the very beginning about the season's roadmap. So yeah, I, I think that this is pretty pretty much a, a bullet to dodge, and uh, that's not the phrase, but fix, a problem to fix. How about that? It's a little confusing, I think. That was the part with all the rules, right? Yeah. Maybe make all the rules or annotations its own section entirely and avoid the storyteller slash casual approach to ensure those first two pages are easy to refer back to and crystal clear. Target audience was clear enough, but per prior feedback, you may have a bigger audience than you realize. Then again, there are benefits to keeping the target small. <laughs> you know where this is going. I do. And I'm sure you'll make the right call. I don't. <laughs> no, it's, you know, that whole niche Niching down concept. Oh, we waste so much time there. It's important, but how important? Where is that fine line? Sometimes it's unclear. Uh, I don't know, you say as well, but you asked the question, and that was my first reaction. Call to action is solid, which mixed signals because somebody else said it was not. More than one person said it was not. So I think it just depends on our perspective, and that's why I'm trying to get as much feedback on this as possible because we all have many perspectives on things, right? So... Spend a little, this was interesting, spend a little more time on who and why. I think it's the core to your framework. Thank you. So it's good to cover thoroughly and look at from different angles. And I, I've been looking at it from many different angles. And yeah, sometimes I'm not sure if I've covered enough or if it's been overkill. So glad to hear a positive in that direction. Ebook and interactive album. I have no clue what to expect, but I'm eager to see it. Very cool. As am I. Next comment. Is this going to be a like a Patreon type thing? I You know, I've given that some thought. Not sure. I think those are all good ways to reward your early adopters. Virtual coffees with Rennie sound good. Probably more than just coffee. Next comment. I think the headers would have helped me particularly in phase two where I get a little lost. Having the ability to nest into multiple levels is really critical. Yep. Perhaps you could try something like all caps to set off another section, or maybe you could try outlining it. And then you give me some examples with Roman numerals. You know, I'll be honest. When I first dove into this world of ebook, and understanding the format of it all and, and seeing how uh, there wasn't really any clear explanation from all these different people who had done ebooks about nested levels past header two. It was just something I kept running into by accident. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, the EPUB format does not honor anything past H2, it seems. And the story origin platform throws away all of my H3s and lower. And it bothered me, and I was like, but who, wh wh where's the answer? Why is that happening? And there was no explanation. And I, I finally just hit upon it by studying a lot of different people doing it this way and why they were doing it. And I was like, well, you know, it seems like when you're reading a book, which I'll admit I seldomly do anymore, I, I'm out of practice with reading. I scan people as, as do most of the technology-ridden world. That's one thing I want to change about the world is taking time to read. We don't. I'm going to go off on a tangent just a little bit here. All we do is seek to the next answer that Google has. Do we read the whole thing? No. We are constantly scanning for the next thing. I mean, the, the idea of calming down 
as I take a breath to try to do that and embody that feeling, God, it's hard. The idea of calming down to actually digest something, enjoy the food, enjoy the read, we don't do it anymore. And so I'm out of practice with the idea of what reading is like. But as I started getting back into it, only enough to understand this problem, I don't think I've ever seen a book with anything past a header level two. There's chapter names, header level one, and then there's subsections, header level two. But when you read, unless you're talking about some textbook, unless a reference book, something for learning, the table of contents idea really is more about something where you're making reference to knowledge you're trying to learn and incorporate. But leisurely reading for pleasure I can't remember the last book, and I've looked for a few that had anything past a header level two. Again, chapters and subsections. So, okay, so as much as I hated the idea of losing the table of contents, I slowly started falling in love with it because it forced me to break things down into manageable chunks that made it easier to read and understand. Aha, and I wonder if that is one of the reasons why books have been made in that manner. Because when you have to... As a technologist, man, this is more than a tangent, but I appreciate this so much. As a technologist, we're so used to nested levels upon nested levels upon nested levels of dependencies and all these different things that trickle up to the big top overarching architecture thing that supports everything. And of course, it needs a bunch of different nested levels. But when you're trying to enjoy content, imagine if you had to watch a movie that way. And every time you wanted to understand what the characters were doing, you had to click a button that would take you to their backstory. And that might be kind of fun, but for a different conversation. And then before you'd understand that backstory, you have to click another button that would take you behind the backstory, behind the scene. I mean, come on. You don't watch a movie to engage with it. You, you, usually it's to passively enjoy something. So I really fell in love with this thing that I hated at the beginning because this constraint actually became a really cool thing to force me to be more concise and enjoy the, the pace of reading my own stuff. I was like, well, heck, if I'm enjoying this more, it's going to be more enjoying, more joyful, more enjoying, more joyful for the next person, hopefully. So it's just a really weird realization that hit me as I was doing this. So my goodness, really cool sometimes to have constraints. All right, next, finally, next comment. <sighs> I love it. Like I said before, this is about the video I was considering pushing out there for the intro. Like I said before, it would be good to hear the audiobook read by the author. I love that when the author actually reads their own audiobook. So a YouTube preview of, of chapter one would be cool. Next comment. I get it. This was awesome. This is in reference to the fiction part finally. And now I am starting to understand some of what I didn't from the prior chapter. This is going to be a Rennie's first person adventure through a metamorphosis of sorts as I think we will watch some of these negative self-image traits evolve and eventually disappear, most of them. Looking forward to reading more. This is the comment that you thought got lost, but Story Origin decided to keep it for us, so very cool. That's all of the responses. Let's go to the comments. There were a few of those too. There's a lovely comment that just says the word nice, and I have to read what you're talking about. I define an artist as anyone who knows their design and chooses to craft their life around it, excel at it, and become the master of it. Therefore, your nice comment, which you did not have to write about that, is very nice. So this comment, some of the, actually all these comments, I'm probably going to have to read mine for it to make more sense. By the, this is mine. I say, by the end of this book, I want you to be inspired, excited, and empowered to bring your ideas to life and, because of that, live a life of purpose, on purpose. And you say, this hits at the right moment. I have just enough background to wonder what I might get out of it, and this encourages me to read on. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of these comments today, guys, made me chuckle, dude. It's like, it's they're unnecessary to share, but... It, it's not, it's not feedback to correct anything. It's just encouragement. And I've, I've gotten a lot out of that today. It's been so helpful to end the week with a lot of encouragement. You've given me a lot of feedback that was things I had to change and work on over the last few weeks. But this today, it was nice to have gotten through so much of that and to be rewarded by so many awesome comments. So thank you. Here's your comment. You say it's a call to action disguised as a warning. Clever. And I didn't even, you know what? 
I, I, my brain works like that, I think, subconsciously, but I did not think of it that way. So it was so cool to see you pick up on that. You, you moved it from my subconscious to my conscious. And, and the comment was this. It took me, th- it says warning on the top, and then it says, it took me three decades before the last stages got fast, only because it took me three decades before I answered my who and my why. You say it's a call to action disguised as a warning. Clever. <laughs> Another comment. I'm going to skip what I say, but you say, you may want to consider seeking trademark status for these phrases and then pound not legal advice. Did I just say pound? Oh, I'm old. I don't need this white fur to tell people that. Hashtag. Come on, man. Get with the times. Hashtag not legal advice. That's what I meant. Yeah, you knew that. In reference to my comment, the emotive quality of my voice, you say, I do wish this was an audio book read by the author. Thank you. And it, yes. And you say you love this. And it's highlighting the phrase, I'm not prescribing anything for you, Rennie. You have a personality, not a disorder. I don't mind repeating that phrase. It's meant a lot to me over the years. This is a very interesting uh, comment and suggestion, actually. I added it to my to-do list. You just highlighted the word her, and you said, hey, naming names might be a nice way to add legitimacy to this person and the ADHD doctor. You know, you, you would want to get their approval, of course, and therein lies the problem. But this may have reciprocal positive effects for their business and yours. Just a thought. I'll talk, I'll reach out to you about that. Uh, I'm interested. There's, there's some people that I've just decided for expediency and just because I actually discovered it's not everybody wants to be named. Um, sometimes I just left the names out to be on the safe side. It's weird. And it's why I, I say so much about what I do about the truth as a format in the intro. It's, uh, it's the world we live in. But it's, if it's possible, yeah, I'd be interested in seeing how to make that possible. There's a comment here that you don't understand. I'll have to reach out to you about that and ask more information. This was interesting. I didn't realize that this happened, but it's cool that you pointed it out. You say another reason, colon, it made me scroll back to look at the lists again. First, I thought that was a bad thing. I was like, oh, but, but then when I read what it was about, I say, hey, wait, man. And I, I said, I did this. Why did I do this? And I explained, this is the reason why I did this. And you're saying, oh, another reason. It actually got me, into, apparently you're saying it got you interested to scroll back up and reread something. The way you're putting the smiley face on there, I'm assuming that's a good thing. And, and now I, that I think about it, it does seem like it is. Because that is going to be a, a very integral list to the remainder of this book series. So very cool, my friend. <laughs> another comment that made me laugh my butt off. Oh, it's like, yeah, I wish I could record while I'm, I'm in Starbucks often, so I can't record myself laughing at this stuff. Too much noise. Not that I'm embarrassed to like make a fool out of myself. I think by now you guys know that to be the case, but too much noise to record. So you say 3D holographic laser tag tiger hunt version, question mark? Uh, yeah, this is in re- reference to the, my traditional ebook, interactive ebook, audio book, or interactive album. I simplified that list a little bit, but yeah, I get the point you're making. Um, it's a lot of crazy stuff in a list there that's hard to understand without a lot of explanation. This sounds like a joke, and I don't know if you mean it as a joke, but my 10,000 foot view section header, you say, good to set bearings. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'll reach out to see if there was more to it than just that. First person shooter video games come to mind. I can get lost in your experience almost as if it were my own. That's a good perspective for making your experience resonate with the reader. Heck yeah. If I can get you lost, but I can still help you find your way out of the woods, mission accomplished. If I can only get you lost in the woods, I mean, that's half the mission, but nah, yeah. I'm not going to half-ass it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. You see, I just hit a point where I just had to stop because I really was not following. Perhaps it will all be clear as I go on and begin to see the chapters sandwiched between launch. Yeah, right now I feel like it's a lot of rules. Yeah, a lot of you guys have commented on that. And again, a lot of that has been fixed because it's been even hard for me to read that. And rules are good, you say, as long as they are clear and simple. Perhaps they are, these are. Perhaps, again, I am just too tired to be reading this. Nope, it's not you. It is me. But that's my honest, immediate reaction. And honesty is a virtue, they say. Gravity is a theory. Earth is flat. I know. So what? You said you got a good, solid belly laugh at this. I immediately wanted to know what that was about. So I clicked. I say, imagine me reading a bedtime story to you, except that it's not bedtime and you'll never sleep again. Not after we're done. Never sleepwalk again, that is. Glad you laughed at that. Oh, especially if you were tired. 
Maybe that woke you up temporarily. <laughs> Another nice to the comment, it doesn't matter how late we are if we're planning to fail. Yeah. And that is it. In Spanish, we would say, colorín colorado, este cuento está acabado. That's usually something I would hear my mom or my dad say after reading a bedtime story. Hey, good segue. We just talked about bedtime stories. But it was only after they wanted me to go the F to sleep, as Samuel L. Jackson used to say. I think he still does. It's a good kid's book. So now, really quickly, part two. I reached out to the Story Origin CEO, really nice guy, asked him about some of the difficulties we were having about the images and the expectation that the beta would be allowing graphic novels to work with it too. Not going to happen this time around. He seemed interested enough that I, I couldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to fold that into his next beta of the beta testing feature. But for now, he gave me a couple of workarounds, um, neither of which I think I'm going to be able to chase down. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into Google Docs because that's where I'm at already. I have my master on Google Docs. So it'd be a simple transition just to make a beta version of that. It's not cool to be splitting between two different technology options, and my apologies on that because I've already got you to sign up for Story Origin. But there's still a lot of cool, cool things about Story Origin that I'm planning on staying there for. So this does not invalidate that platform at all. It's a wonderful platform. For the part with the images, I'm going to create some Google Docs, and I'll reach out to you guys when those are ready. But that's not going to happen until we exhaust getting the introduction cleaned out. So I'm planning on having one more beta, beta version two, reusing what we currently have out there. I'm going to upload some version two docs to that same place you guys were at. I'll let you know when those are up there, and I will unlock, obviously, all of us so we can get back in. I'm expecting that that time around, hopefully, we're going to breeze through that so much quicker just because we've already done our feedback. This is just going to be a, kind of a sign-off. Obviously, if you, ch if you catch more stuff, speak up, but... I think this is going to be a lot more pleasant in terms of expediency. And once we get through all that, then I'm going to go ahead and create those Google Docs and share those out. And I can't wait because, guys, I've got just about all of the images done. I'll, let's just say that. It, they're done. The images are done for the first two books in the series. Pretty cool because as you guys were giving me the feedback, not only was I able to fold that in, but it gave me time to work on a lot of the missing pieces of, of these two books in the series. So that'll be cool to finally share with you guys once we get past um, beta version two. That's it. Good night. Good fight. Have an awesome weekend and sleep tight.